Joining me now, NBC's Mark Murray, Matt Gorman, Republican strategist and former senior communications advisor for Tim Scott for America, is here as well. I think, Mark, we can say without question, this is going to be one of the most expensive, nastiest, and arguably consequential battles for control of the Senate we've ever seen. What's this campaign season going to look like? Oh, well, Chris, I think you summed it up really well in Montana, Ohio, and across the country with this presidential election as well. But let's be clear about this is the battle for Senate control for Republicans. And the magic number for Republicans is netting two uh, pickups. Uh, uh, that would be guaranteed regardless of what ends up happening in the presidential race for a Senate majority with Democrats currently at a 51-49 majority. As we already know, Republicans are the overwhelming front runners in West Virginia. Virginia. That's Joe Manchin's seat where he's not running for re-election. So to get that magic number of two, Republicans would need to win in Montana, the race you just described that is now fully set, or in Ohio, where incumbent Democratic Senator Sherrod Brown is receiving a really tough challenge as well. Uh, and so those are the races that would end up deciding uh, the Senate majority. Um, Democrats have candidates who have been able to win these races time and time again, uh, but Republicans are counting on the national environment and the presidential election that could end up toppling these Democrats in these red states. All right, Matt, let's talk about a couple of these specific races. In New Jersey, Andy Kim says Menendez has no chance of winning back his seat as an independent. But Jersey City's mayor said he thinks it could throw the race into chaos. And of course, Menendez does have name recognition. Is it too early to conclude that him running as an independent isn't really a factor? I mean, look, if I was a uh, Republican uh, working on the Senate race, I'd keep an eye on it. If you remember back in 2021, uh, Jack Chitterelli was running for governor and came within a couple points of defeating Phil Murphy. So, look, it's not out of the question. If you're splitting the Democratic vote uh, like Menendez could, then anything is possible. I think, look, if we're talking about New Jersey, honestly, it's probably, you know, Republicans are looking at maybe 54 seats, right? I, I don't see a way that the clinching seat is New Jersey, but that's something to keep an eye on. All right. As Politico phrased it so far, um, John Tester has essentially defied political gravity. He is a Democrat in a deep red state, but he's also very popular. Last time around, and, and I was there uh, at the heart of this campaign, he was running against a guy who was widely derided for calling himself a rancher when he didn't have any animals on his property. Um, it was pretty clear from talking to voters what they thought about that. This time, though, John Tester is up against a photogenic former Navy SEAL. What do you think this race is going to look like? Oh, Chris, you know, I think it's important to note that, yes, John Tester has defied political gravity, along with Sherrod Brown, starting in the 2006 cycle, 2012, 2018, and uh, now 2024. But this will probably be the most challenging political environment of all. This is one where the winds certainly aren't at the Democratic Party's back just right now. And what's going to be central to Tester and also Sherrod Brown in Ohio is winning over these voters who are going to vote for Donald Trump in the presidency presidential election, but say, you know what, I'm going to vote Democratic for, uh, for Senate in either Montana or in Ohio. And as we've seen in past cycles, the share of the ticket uh, splitting uh, voters is much, much less. Uh, you know, the people who are willing to say, I'm going to vote Republican for the president, but I'm going to vote Democratic for the United States Senate. We are seeing fewer and fewer of those uh, uh, kind of uh, ticket splitters. However, that is crucial. And what we've seen from both Sherrod Brown and from uh, John Tester is their ability to do that in the 2012 cycle. I want you to put on your hat, if you will, Matt, um, back when you were communications director at the National Republican Congressional Committee, because you know a little something about ground game, money, messaging. What would it take for Republicans to beat John Tester? Uh, I think, honestly, an even atmosphere, right? As you put at the, at the start of your segment, Trump won this by 16. So Tester needs to win a lot of Trump voters. So he only won by about 18,000 votes. And you're right. It was against a relatively lackluster GOP candidate in an era where Trump was not on the ballot and he was very unpopular. 2018, the Democrats won back uh, the House as well. So he had some atmospherics pushing him this time. The uh, NRSC, the Senate committee, projects about 50,000 new right of center voters have come to the state of Montana, a lot of those during COVID. So those in and of itself could be enough just to push them over. 
he has to do a lot of work to know those Trump voters, as you said. Mark Murray, Matt Gorman, guys, thank you so much. We'll be talking about this much more in the weeks and months to come.